Luke chapter 5, starting in verse 12, it says, In one of the villages, Jesus met a man with an advanced case of leprosy. When the man saw Jesus, he bowed with his face to the ground, begging to be healed. I'm just going to stop right there for a minute. This man had an advanced case of leprosy. Wow. Covered. Body is covered with leprosy. And, you know, it wasn't a good thing for somebody to have leprosy back then because they were, they were considered to be an outcast, you know, a castaway to society. They could not go in and out, you know, amongst people because people were in fear of getting leprosy because there was no cure for leprosy at all. And so they were an outcast. Can you imagine this guy? He just doesn't have leprosy. He has an, an advanced case of leprosy. Contagious. So he's an outcast. Can you imagine how this guy must have felt every day of his life? The, the things going on in his mind. Maybe, you know, anxiety. Maybe fear. Maybe just depressed. You know, feeling overwhelmed. Discouraged. Because he couldn't do what everybody else was doing. You know, the priest would keep a mon and, and monitor the people that had leprosy. They wouldn't let them go in to mingle with everyone else. So they were in a place of bondage. Bondage. Stricken with leprosy, a disease. Contagious. So can you just, can you just picture this man and how he must have felt? But here's the thing that I want to just pull out of here is that he did not stay in that place of leprosy. He took action. He could have just sat and just, you know, well, this is my life. You know, I have leprosy, so this is just how it's going to be the rest of my life. So I might as well just accept it. I might as well just come to grips with it. He could have just done that. But he chose to go after the one that could do something about it. He chose to get up and take action when he heard faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And he heard faith because he knew that Jesus was nearby. So let's continue to read. When the man saw Jesus, he bowed with his face to the ground. And he begged Jesus to be healed. Do you see this man? Not only does he hear faith, but he took action. He believed that, if, that Jesus was more than able to heal him. Isn't that something? Faith motivated him to go after Jesus. And you see this beautiful example of humility. He bowed his head to Jesus. Another translation said he fell down in front of Jesus. And he's begging him to be healed. So you see this humility. He humbled himself. In full humility before Jesus. The source. The one that could do something about his problem. His disease. So he's begging Jesus. To be healed. And the Lord said to this man. That he was willing to heal him. Isn't that something? Jesus was willing. So let's just read a little bit more. Jesus. So just this man goes to Jesus. He bows his head before Jesus. Humbles himself in full submission. And he made his petition known unto the Lord. And he said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. If you are willing, you can heal me and make me whole. That's what he said. And then Jesus reached out and touched him. Touched a man who was contagious. 
touched a man who had a disease that people were afraid of. But Jesus wasn't afraid. Jesus reached out and he touched this man, physically touched him. And that word touch here, in the Greek it means to attach. A connection took place. Jesus physically touched him. So there was this, this, this connection. The word was right there. The word of God touched this man. And the verb for that word touched is to set on fire. Isn't that something? So not only did Jesus touch this man in his situation, but he set him on fire. This man was made clean. Jesus said, I am willing. Be healed. That simple. It's that simple. Why do we complicate things? God just wants us to have faith, to believe on him. He's a God that can do the impossible. Yes. See, what we think is impossible, God, God can turn that whole thing around and make it a possibility. He said, all things are possible to them that believe. It's that simple. It's faith. 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 When we have faith, we should be motivated to go to the Father. To make our petitions known and not to be afraid or ashamed to do it. God is an ever-present help in the time of trouble. And he wants us to approach him, the throne of grace. To find mercy, grace, and help in the time of need. Isn't that something? So here, this man, this man filled with leprosy, is in physical contact with the word of God, standing in the presence of Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. He wasn't ashamed to go to the Lord and ask him for healing. So Jesus touched him, reached out, touched him, connected. They made contact and he set him on fire. Hallelujah. Just a powerful word. Let's continue to read. And instantly, the leprosy disappeared. That's what happens when the word of God shows up. When the word of God is spoken into our lives and we, we take heed to the word. Things that we were suffering, things that we were battling, things that we were being subjected to. All of a sudden, has got to go away. Because the word of God is a word that's filled with authority. And we have the authority. We have his word in us today. Just fast forward to the new covenant. We have his word in us, living in us, abiding in us. It's in him that we live, move, and have our being. We have the authority of God living in us. And we need to act like we have the, the authority of God by demonstrating it through our submission. We speak it. We live it. We demonstrate it. We manifest it. We allow the spirit and the life of God to flow in us and out of us. This should be a common thing. This should be an everyday occurrence. And that's what God's calling us to. An everyday occurrence to manifest his glory. An everyday occurrence to let the river of life, freedom, healing, deliverance, miracles, signs and wonders to flow from our lives. That when we speak, we're not speaking our own words. Like Paul said in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Paul said, I'm not coming to you with enticing words of, of, of my wisdom. I'm not coming to you based upon what my knowledge, based upon what I know. I'm coming to you based upon the spirit of Christ so that I can demonstrate the glory and manifest God. I'm not coming to you based upon my knowledge. I'm coming to you with a demonstration of the spirit and the power of God so that your faith doesn't rest on me, but your faith is going to rest on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Your faith is going to rest on Jesus. That was Paul's focus and that should be ours. Pointing people to the Lord, manifesting Christ, letting the river flow. We have authority living in us today. So this man, filled with leprosy, begged Jesus for healing. 
Jesus reached out and touched him, made contact, set him on fire. Hallelujah. This man was made whole. It says, and instantly the leprosy disappeared. Instantly, suddenly, the leprosy disappeared. It didn't linger. It didn't happen the next day. It instantly disappeared. Then Jesus instructed him not to tell anyone what had happened. He said, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. My word cleansed you. My word, Jesus is saying, touched your body and I drove out that spirit of infirmity, that leprosy. His word set a fire in him, driving out all manner of sickness and disease. That's power. 